Hello everyone and welcome to another Imperator Rome video. Today we will look at some of the more fun nations to play. I'm sure by now you have heard of all the nations that are commonly being played such as Rome of course, Carthage, all the Diadochi kingdoms, Moria, Sparta and so on. And I agree those nations are fun as they have more flavor and events related to them. But in this video I want to show you some of the more unconventional nations to play in Imperator Rome which are fun and challenging at the same time. So without wasting any time let's dive right into it. We start with Epirus or Epirus. Epirus starts as a Hellenic nation in the Greece area. They start with a decent population and economy compared to other neighboring Greek states. The advantage you have with playing Epirus is that you can expand south into Greece very early. Those wars are easy and you can run them over without any problems. You can eventually expand north in Illyria. And once you get some boats you can start your conquest in southern Italy or Magna Graecia as it was called then. Most of the initial expansion is fairly smooth as all cities you will conquer are of the same culture group and that's Hellenic and most of them are also the same Hellenic religion thus minimizing the wrong culture and wrong religion malice. Then you can wait till Macedon and Thrace are busy in another war against Phrygia and slowly start taking over Macedon as well. With so many expansion routes you should be able to grow fairly rapidly and then you can take on the Diadochi, Rome and Carthage if you want a more challenging later game. And since you guys seem to like some history tidbits thrown in with these videos, here's one on Epirus. The mother of Alexander the Great, Olympias, was the daughter of the king of Epirus. Now if you haven't heard of Olympias, which is not uncommon because people know Alexander and Philip II his father more than her, but I would urge you to read more about her. In my opinion she's one of the more fascinating women in all history. I mean she was the wife of Philip II and the mother of Alexander the Great which already makes her pretty significant. She was also known to be very active in politics and held major sway in Macedon while Alexander was away for his conquest. She also frequently corresponded with Alexander during that time. And you know a guy like Alexander who led an army to what essentially was a world conquest then at the age of 20. This guy has been leading armies against local revolts since he was 16 years old. He believed that he was the son of God Zeus and that he was actually superhuman like a demigod. To instill that mentality both his father and Olympias had to have a major hand in shaping Alexander for what he was. And if you ignore all that information, consider how unusual it is to find detailed records of women in history. Just the fact that we are still talking about Olympias after 2300 years is fact enough that she was extraordinary. There are a lot of books on her if you are curious by the way. Getting back to Imperator Rome, the second fun nation I like is Bactria. It has a difficult start but it's definitely worth playing. Bactria starts as a satrapy to the Seleucid Empire which means they are a subject. So at the start you cannot attack anyone even though there are some juicy targets in the north. However there is an event at the start of the game that will either give lot of land from Seleucid Empire to Moria or both empires will go to war. This event will always happen and it doesn't matter which way the AI goes whether surrendering the provinces to Moria or going to war against them. You should declare war on your overlord Seleucid Empire as early as possible. You will have to fight Parthia as well because they are the other loyal subject but Seleucid Empire's army are scattered around and it will give you enough time to siege down Parthia and start marching towards the Seleucid Empire provinces. Bactria also starts with a significant population and a healthy economy. So once you get the first war sorted out further expansion becomes much easier. Historically Bactria has been part of other empires till date. They were part of the Medes, then the Persian Empire, then Alexander's Empire and now they are under Seleucid Empire. After this Bactria actually broke off from the Seleucid Empire too and formed the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom which thrived for a long time and expanded south into India. Eventually they collapsed due to internal conflicts but in Imperator playing as Bactria is both fun as you can have a strong economy and challenging because you will have to face both Seleucid Empire and the Mauryan Empire at some point. Chola is the next nation I like. Or is it Kola? I think it's Chola so we'll go with that. Chola is the strongest nation in southern India. 
Obviously Mauryas are the strongest one in India and we don't want to engage them till we are big enough. Starting as Chola, you can expand very quickly and eat up some surrounding nations. Just make sure to keep a buffer zone between you and the Mauryan Empire. India has a lot of population and you can grow your economy quickly by expanding. Facing off against Mauryas is going to be difficult anyways, but that's the challenging part and you can time it when they are busy in another war and then eat them up bit by bit. Chola Kingdom actually was a very successful kingdom and at their peak they controlled all of southern India, Malaysia and parts of Indonesia. And obviously to control their vast empire they had a very powerful navy, considered the best in ancient Indian subcontinent. One fun fact about southern India is that no North Indian nation has ever controlled all of South India. Even Mughals at their peak who had basically all of India did not have the southern tip. And I find that very fascinating. I don't think it's because of logistics or difficulties. I think it just happened to be that way by circumstances. It's an interesting historical tidbit anyways. Next, let's look at the kingdom of Kush or Kush. Kushites were inhabitants of the Nubian region in the valley of Nile River south of Egypt. At their peak, Kushites occupied all of Nile Valley along with the Mediterranean coast, so they were a huge power in the Late Bronze Age. They were eventually defeated by the Assyrians and later Persians when Egypt came back to its full glory. In Imperator Rome, Kush starts as a small nation to the south of Egypt. Although Egypt is super strong here, as Kush you can expand into the other smaller nations nearby. The region is fairly prosperous actually with decent population and a lot of good trade goods such as precious metal and incense. So you can consolidate power and build a strong base here. Then wait for Egypt to go to war against Phrygia or Carthage and take your chances with them. Or you can expand to the Arabian Peninsula once you secure the port city. Either way, playing as Kush will provide you with a good expansion base and then a good mid-game challenge in taking on Egypt. And lastly, we have the Boi. Well, actually Bohemia, but essentially they are Boi because I'm not sure if Bohemia was a real separate tribe. I think they're just part of the Boi tribe that we know of from the Roman literature. The reason I think Bohemia is interesting is because they are a migratory tribe surrounded by settled tribes. Migratory and settled tribes are two different types of government types and I'm not going to get deep into the government mechanics here because I think that deserves a whole separate discussion. But to summarize here, migratory tribes have two mechanics that settled tribes don't. One, migratory tribes can migrate, as name implies, to unsettled cities. And Bohemia starts with a huge area of uncolonized cities on three sides. Settled tribes can also colonize, but they need a city with 10 population to start colonizing next to it, which is rare to find in this region. While as migratory tribe, you can just use some oratory power to take up to 20 pops from a city and move them to a new city. The second mechanic is that migratory tribes can also pillage cities. You can do that if the city has a civilization value of at least 20. Which isn't the case with neighboring cities, but you start really close to the North Italian tribes who are Hellenized and have sufficient civilization. Pillaging gives some monarch points, but really not that much, so it's just a minor perk. But you can still expand into the surrounding nations, or just go full colonization and expand that way. Either way, you will be mostly expanding into provinces with Gallic culture group and Druidic religion, minimizing the wrong culture and religion happiness issues, making for a fun and challenging playthrough. And that was my short list of interesting off-the-road nations to play as in Imperator Rome. If you are a new player to grand strategy games, you should start with either Rome or Egypt or one of the bigger nations. But if you have played a bit of EU4 or CK2 or are just looking for an adventure, you should definitely give one of these nations a go. Check out my other Imperator Rome videos and let me know in comments which nation got your interest the most. You were watching a Radio S guide, thank you for your time and I'll see you all in the next one.